So we're back again tonight, engine room chat. I'm actually at the boat this week as well. I oh, managed no. to make it. <laughs> so uh, I've been I've been instructed by Mrs. Warner to keep it all all professional <clears throat> as best as I can. So I thought Good we'd have a chat tonight. We've got Jeff obviously here, and we've got Dave here. Um, we're going to talk about heat heat so uh, solar panels and and wind turbines. So um, basically, as Jeff knows, the wind turbine idea that I'm going to look to do. I bought a, um, as I said, an alternator from a BMW, which is 180 amps, and a fan. Now the fan's probably not big enough for the alternator to do this, but I just want to see what sort of juice I can get out of it with that little fan on to see. How are you going to mount it? It's what? How are you going to mount the fan on the pulley? Oh no! It should. It should. Um, it's got a bolt in the middle of it. It should come off. So even if it's a different size, I might have to just down downsize it or put make you know down put a, a threaded thing you know some sort of thread that's bigger and just you need smaller. to get it in the center though don't you otherwise it just yeah yeah well yeah it should be i mean the fan should be central anyway the nut on that so as long as i keep the nut the same or it, it it's a plastic fan so it might i might be able to drill it out yeah drill it out to fit the front straight on the front of the alternator just to try it so um is that pulley on that alternator like that wide on it yeah, it comes off though. It's bolted. Yeah, it will come off. Don't need some. Some of them you need special tools to get them off. No, it looks like a nut. It looks from because that one's actually. Not right. from the front. I don't know. Have you ever done anything like that before yourself, Dave? No, I, I, I've, I've played about with alternators in the past, but I'm, I'm going back thirty years. So they haven't changed much, Dave. I know that. Yeah. Like <laughs> the principles the same. Principle, you're probably a bit more expensive and uh, a little bit more efficient now. Like, right. but, the one I bought um, second hand was 19 quid. I'm just hoping the profit works. <laughs> yeah. That'll work. Yeah. No, I mean, I mean, is, the, is this the boat or, or are you going to have it? I'm, I'm, gonna have it. I'm not going to put it. Oh, well, I'm going to. It's for the boat. It's for, it, oh, it's for the boat. Um, Oh uh, yeah, it's for the boat basically, and um, um, it's just to see uh, as an alternative supply. So rather than spending six hundred quid on one that um, is properly, ma you know, properly made, and that I thought, well, if I can, if I can, make, if I can put one together for, for sort of fifty quid, can, and don't forget that the regulator's already on it, um, so you haven't got to then put a separate regulator because it's already regulated because it's just like the engine one going around. Um, and then, and as long as you put some sort of brake on it to make sure that you can cut it off or switch, so you can switch it off if it gets too, you know, if it's going too long or it's too too far. Now you're going to do the wires down the pole. Well, that's the only other thing. My only other thing for doing the um, uh, what I was, I, I'll prop for this test one. I'll probably put a stop on it. So it, just stop, goes there, so it can only so it can only turn. 360 but it won't go all the way around because otherwise the wires are going to get in a right mess <laughs> so it'll basically it and put a bin on top so it spins that way rather around yeah. The on the end yeah 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 no i will i will i think as i said it's it's just a bit of fun to see what I, I can make happen really it's just you know and and a bit and lisa's said it would make good footage apparently <laughs> <laughs> so uh it will, wouldn't know. it go and flies the bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, who knows? It probably will. But <laughs> if she'll she'll want to she'll want to get a uh, she'll want to get a video if it does fall a bit. She'll want that on camera. As long as, as, long as it's balanced and it's centre, it should be fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hello to everybody. We're getting a lot of hellos. Sue yeah. Epson. Sue Epson's yeah. watching. Hello, Sue. Sue was Sue was in in, a, in our marina a couple of boats down from us. She was near your boat. Uh, she? Chris, Philip. Uh, Gene and Narrowboat Vlogs. Um, oh, and Narrowboat Vlogs. Well, we might as well answer this. Yeah, one. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, don't don't give me that look, Lisa. Don't oh, give me that look. That's <laughs> Jack. I'm going to answer. I'm going to. I'm going to yeah, answer yeah. it straight away. What are the pros and cons of a second alternator? Now, I would think, and I don't know how everyone else feels about that, but the second alternator on an engine, um, if you add just the one starter one, it's a lot of load. I would think. To do all your starter batteries and your 
ledger batteries whereas if you've got a separate starter back uh, sorry not battery so alternator um it's it's got to distribute the load a little bit and it surely because at least if you're all oh, if you sorry if your ledger battery alternator goes down you can still run your engine you can still move that that's our as a set up we've got a, a small i think it's 35 40 amp alternator for starter battery and then a 240 amp that's a bigger alternator isn't it? for leisure that's bigger wouldn't it 240 uh, but we have got five batteries 504 amp batteries so we've got a big a big battery yeah. bank yeah yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. but it works it works great i think I, I were really pleased with how it's set up it's five year old now and touch wood we had a problem with it so you've got two um, as well jeff haven't you yeah i've got two 70 amp i don't know what the start battery one is but i just put a new ledger one in. what what you your ledger battery one's only 70 yeah. amps yeah i think so yeah. that's quite small isn't it yeah it doesn't it seems to do it yeah yeah i know yeah i, I don't think it it it's charge yeah, I don't think it because after we've done a full day's, I was saying to you the other day, if after we've done a full day's cruising, um, if I then, well, like we would go back to the marina, I'd then plug into the shoreline and our battery charger would go tw straight to 20 amps and would be charging for about six or seven hours. And that's after an eight day cruising. So I never, th I don't think our, our, um, our alternator puts in enough because we've got a bank of five as well. We've got 500. And, 550 amps in our bank so i don't think our, i think we need a bigger a bigger alternator for cruising just going on what jack's saying about uh, a second a second alternator for leisure batteries and i'm not sure you can have can you have two alternators charging the same bank i'm not I sure whether think, that'll work i don't think yeah no i don't think you have two um no i think they're i do think they're set I think he means a second because you can get a setup, I think, which one alternate does all of it. Yeah, but you'd have to have a split charging system. Split, a split, uh, yeah, split charger. That's what I think. I think that's what he's saying. Um, basically, what are the pros and cons of having the second alternator? So I, 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 that's why I said I think the pros and cons are if you, if you first, if you only have one alternator and it goes down, then you 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 got nothing. You got no starter. You got no. You got no leisure. Or at least if your leisure one goes down, you've still got Start. battery for starter, and and you could always hop over to your leisure one. You know what I mean? To have a spare yeah. to do either or. Whereas if you cut one out, if you've only got one, you've only got one. So um, I think I think the the, the pros out, out outweigh the cons on having two, um, and it's not hard to fit. They come with fitting brackets and all sorts now. That can't. It's not and hard to fit an extra alternator, and it's quite a simple wiring system on the back, generally. And it's just two wires, really, in it yeah. um, to your earth and your thing. So that's what I would think on that. That's other thing. Like I Kim, uh, who else we got here? I was thinking of a second one for the leisure batteries. No, so I think is narrowboat vlogs. That's Jack in it. Yeah, yeah, I think. Um, if you've got one that does both now, I think you 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 can't just add another one to charge it again. I think that would get confusing. I think you'd you'd have to separate the one that's on there to um, charge either your leisure batteries or your starter battery and add a second one to do the other job. I don't think you can just chuck another one in the system. Well, of yeah, course, an issue with it generally. I think it'd be fighting yeah. itself, wouldn't it? Especially if they're different amps. One would be yeah. over overworking, the other one won't be. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've not built my own, but I've only ever seen one with two two alternators, so I've never seen the single one. But I think the single ones, I they are they're quite big units. I think um, yeah. I don't think they're like small units. But anyway, okay. Uh, Chet says hello. We have two alternators. Yeah, Kim said most. I think most boats do have two. Um, and okay, so this Jack says. Let's answer this question. I know Lisa will probably tell me off. Right? Jumping ahead of myself. Jumping ahead. Um, if you were buying a used narrowboat, what are your two or three biggest tech criteria for instant steel hull paint job? Except, thanks for the answer on the alternators. Um, if I was buying, a, well, 
to be honest with you, I think if I was buying a used narrowboat, I don't, don't know about you two, I, um, mine would be obviously always flat hull, uh, always the standard 10, 10, 6. Yeah, the least of that list there would be the paint job. Yeah, yeah, you, I mean, the paint yeah, the paint jobs are paint jobs. You can do yeah. it. I mean, if the, as long as the hull's been looked after, I think, you right. know, black and wise, I think as long as the thing floats, anything else can be fixed, can't it? That's right. You know what I mean? If you've got you a running you're engine, you're away, aren't you? You can, you can yeah. work, everything, work at everything else. It's why we, that's why we, I mean, I don't know, because obviously you built your own, so you know, Dave knows how well he's still holes built, but we didn't when we bought yeah. Nutshell. Um, so I was a bit loath to spend too much money on the interior, not knowing if the if the um, yeah. bottom was any good, basically. So that's why we had it surveyed. But yeah, you've got to, you've got to have a survey. I think the uh, I don't know how much did your survey cost? About five hundred, were it? Uh, I don't think it was that bad actually. I think it was about because I had it done when it was out of the water being blacked. So before right. they blacked it, I, so I didn't have to pay for it to be dragged out. I did it all in one go. I think it was about. 400 or something it was about 400 it wasn't it wasn't horrific four 450 something like that and and i've got a really good report what's um, that on the thickness of the hole and the sides and that that's right is that on the thickness of the hole and everything yeah yeah basically they did they yeah, did yeah, the yeah, you on youtube done it himself he bought the tool did it it's did. a hammer test isn't it yeah he said he said it was 75 quid or something he just went round chalking up the thicknesses as he went yeah, yeah, you can buy them. Yeah, uh, they, 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 I've used them uh, in my working life. They're fairly easy to use. You just dab that Don't thing in a bit of oil, hold it up to uh, metal, and it tells you, thick. it you thickness. Yeah. You might have to scrape paint off a bit. Yeah, I think they do scrape uh, them off. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, that that'd be my biggest advice. If you're gonna spend, if you're looking at spending. 20 30 40 grand on a boat you've got to have a survey done because yeah. if you're if your hull's sound everything else you can work the rest with rest it don't matter no. you can yeah. put a new engine in you can paint it yeah i'd say a sound hull and spray foam insulation two things i'd look for yeah rest definitely. it you can do I mean, if you haven't got, I said Jack, I think Jack's put again an engine question mark. I mean, there's so many engines out there. Um, I would think, um, I would think, I wouldn't, what engine, it wouldn't bother me as long as it was running and regularly serviced and had a gearbox and, you know, and it was going backwards and forwards and, and, you know, and, all, and everything was there and you could check most of that yourself. I mean, in a, in a, we had our first boat fully surveyed. And when we had it fully surveyed, they did give us, he did go right through the engine as well, told me what mounts had gone, what, you know, mm -hmm. what needed, where any bearings were, were, were bad. Um, but to be honest with you, again, it was a case of anything like that is, you know, when you look at uh, um, the hull, overplating is bloody expensive. <laughs> it, it, it's dear as well, you know. I've seen some horrific bills for overplating and you might as well have just invested that money in a boat that didn't need it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I know you can probably get a good deal on them, but I just don't like the fact someone said, and I, I don't know if you I heard the other day that someone said about also, which I didn't even take into account because we know someone that's got an overplating on the bottom of her boat um, and they just put a 10 mil plate on the bottom of it, which then doubles the weight. Mm. It's what his draft is all is is already lower than. I think if you've bought a boat and it's fine, and then in the future you have to have it done, then that's fine because it's your boat. Yeah. But I wouldn't buy one if it's already done. No, no, I wouldn't personally. I wouldn't, but you know, but I know people who do, but that's their choice. But I think, I think for me, the hull is the main thing uh, because. I mean, there's that many engineers. If you're not, if you're not that handy yourself, if you if your engine's got a problem, there's loads of engineers out there that can come and help you. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, in comparison to the in comparison to the hole, an yeah. engine's not that dear. No. Even a recon one's a couple of grand, isn't it? Just have it and then get it fitted. So it's not it's not a horrific horrific bill. So so yeah, I hope that Jack that I answered a few questions. The main thing is it's got a float. <laughs> <laughs> that's the main yeah. thing it's got to float and it's got to be a sound a sound a sound one so 
Okay, well, we, we had a quick go on the wind turbine thing. So we'll, we'll, I will be posting that. Lisa will be recording that. And we'll, we'll be seeing the results, whether it'll be a laugh or not. Uh, we'll see. The other um, the other thing I've got down here, uh, we'll talk briefly about solar. Who's got who's got solar panels? We have. You have. What you got, Jack? Uh, Dave? Sorry. We've well, got two 260 amp panels, big panels on. So we've got five, yeah, five hundred. Pardon? How many you got? Two, 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 and we've got them at front at boat. Uh, the sort of like there is enough room to walk outside at boat, uh, but Lou does a lot of single landing, so we we put them at front at boat because when she's single landing, she walks on the on the roof at the bike. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. When she's in and out at locks, yeah. Um, I was we've had them on since back end of 2018, and I, I was always a bit skeptical about them. Uh, for Costrum, I didn't think that they gave you enough back, uh, but I, I'll I stand to be corrected. I think yeah. they since we've had them on, they've been absolutely brilliant. Okay, and what, uh, what controller they, has got? What controller? What controller? Uh, I don't know. We the guy who did our, our boat safety certificate, he uh, he he fits them. Right. Um, uh, Eight hundred quid with a, a controller, two panels fitted, which I thought were a bargain. Yeah, well, it's big um, panels. I those big panels. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but his, his advice were put the best controller on that you can afford because yeah. that's the main thing. You can, if yeah, you've got a cheap contro yeah. controller on, he says it's a waste of time. So if you've got a good controller on, I think you've bought a, a Sterling one, ain't you? Uh, mine? Yeah. I bought a Master Vault. <laughs> Master Vault, all oh, right, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah big yeah. daddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so that is yeah. brilliant. I fitted it the other day. I fitted it the other day, so it's it's on there now with three panels now. But the um, yeah, I've just got to upgrade the wire from the controller to the batteries to a thicker core because it came with the other thing. I didn't even realise the one I took off was Mickey Mouse. Um, you know, yeah. just a cheap one from China, and there's no way it feels like it's got nothing in it. <laughs> and it's only ten amps. It's only 10 amp, and I was running two panels in serial into that, which was running about 58 volts, I think, into it. <laughs> but it never got hot, and it did the job. So it never had an issue, which is mental, really. I'm surprised. At one, th uh, one day, I, I expected what it would have blown up. <laughs> <laughs> if I'd have put the extra panel in serial on it, I think it would have probably given You've up. You've had enough problems with burning wires on the back of your boat just lately. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, yeah I'm a big I'm a big advocate for solar panels. Yeah, they they've really surprised me. Yeah. Um, in, in somehow, if we when we've been out cruising and we've been moored up for a week in one place, we've never had to run engine. The so so long as there's a bit of sunshine. Yeah, um, yeah. And we can tilt ours. Yeah. Uh, so Have long you got those as big you can tilt brackets. Things. Have you got those yeah. really big tilt ones? Yeah, I, I, I made my own. Did you? So uh, I can tilt them four ways. Brilliant. So I can what, tilt tilt? them side to side. Oh, yeah. Almost vertical, yeah. Yeah. And uh, even, I think, a couple of days ago, uh, we've got ours permanently tilted up where we are in Marina. And uh, we're getting 11 amps into batteries. For a couple of hours, even yeah. even in you know, in this light, so I were I was quite happy, and we haven't had our battery charger on for five days now, really? and we're down to about sixty percent battery power. What so it's uh, yeah, it, even those even those few hours when it's sunny, you know, it it does give you 
your batteries are boost even even in this time of year. Yeah. Obviously, if it's cloudy and rainy, you get nothing. But if you do get if you do get a bit of sunlight and you can tilt your panels up. your panels towards the sun, it 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 does give you a bit your batteries a bit of a boost. Yeah, you because Jeff, you had some fitted last year, didn't you? Yeah, had one meant, fit. One meant you could leave your fridge on, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's, in the summer, it's brilliant. Can't fault yeah. it. Absolutely yeah. brilliant. Yeah, got, we, I, I can put mine up, but I can't side to side because I made yeah, a yeah, one, my, yeah, one or the other in it. That's it. Down or yeah. up, forty-five. Yeah, yeah. But it made but Jeff, Jeff, it. Jeff couldn't leave his fridge on because it just changed his battery. Yeah. Um, so when he's not here in the summer, it meant that he could just leave the fridge on all the yeah. time. It was an, it was topping up enough yeah. to keep his fridge going um, when he wasn't here. That's right. Uh, but we think your we think your leisure batteries are getting a bit lazy, don't I think we? A lot of the problem was the fridge. Somebody, somebody, I don't know who. I don't <laughs> know, in the fridge, it's turned and turned it right up. So we turned it down when we was there this week, and it it was a lot better. Yeah, it was on five. In and in and out when it really shouldn't do. Yeah, it was on five, so I think it's um, it. I think oh, it was just on um, permanently. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We've ju we've just changed our fridge actually because uh, the fridge were near on ten year old, and to keep it going, we had to have it on seven constantly, and it was just killing yeah. batteries. Yeah. So well, since good. we put since we put new fridge in Shoreline fridge. Yeah, so uh, we yeah. it's it's so much different. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It was only on three, so yeah, our old fridge was the same deal. It was getting tired. It was an old um uh kind of lek one mm, lek one, yeah, I think it was a lek one. Um an old an old lek one and it had a freezer as well and it was freezing all right, but that yeah, but that's we um, started off at night at one time and it yeah. just to save it. But she doesn't like that. So we found no. out what the was it was on five when it should have been yeah, yeah you don't need it on that so well, yeah. i'm gonna just scoot down a couple of these questions uh hello hi hi louise um louise davis i hope you're well um someone asked glenn about device that would automatically position the panels to face the sun the best any more on this oh um i've never seen that i presume you can get those sort of gadgets that, you can get um, satellite dishes can't you that find yeah, I, yeah, I presume there are, you know, gadgets that find the sun, but I'd imagine they're quite hefty because obviously the panels themselves are, are not small. So um, I've seen um, where we are now, um, people that have have got their panels on um, on like uprights. So they're and and that they're on these like I think the guy next door his one he's got a wind turbine as well, and his I think his pivots on the on a, on some sort of bearing, so he doesn't have to move it manually. I think it will spin on it, but it's not on his boat, so he just plugs into it when he's next to it. When it, so it's on his mooring, so it's not. I don't know whether the panels transfer to his boat, but it's on like, like a. It's a huge. I mean, there's two or three of them down down along the row here that have got them all mounted on a, you know, all like say a bank of pallets, but they're not. It's like a bank of wood. Yeah, a couple of them are on little caster wheels, so they just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one next door is on a center rotation. Um, bearing so he doesn't have to sort of shift it, it just spin round. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I would presume there is some sort of gadget that does bring it around, but I haven't seen it for a boat. Most people have to do it manually. Uh, Trev said he found it. Uh, Trev said, I saw Trev say something about the weight of his boat. I, I did know he said it, it makes he said his, his plate was overplated going back to that quickly, and um, he said it makes it a lot more stable in the water. Yeah, and, and I got no. No doubt, it does make it much more stable in the water. My my my, the concern that someone said is it makes it sit lower in the water, so it drags it. It makes it a lot heavier. Um, so sometimes the draft goes a bit um a bit off. Um, you can you can get around that by taking ballast. Down. Yeah, yeah, that's what someone else said. Uh, someone else said remove some of the ballast. So yeah, I think it's just a case of of doing that. Um, uh, let's have a look. What's this one here? Um. Uh, hi guys, our leisure batteries only last about an hour after turning the engine off. I'm guessing they're finally goosed. Solar keeps keeps it going all day. That's David. Yeah, I, I would say anything unless you've got something that's 
pulling all the all the juice out of your batteries because that sounds like they're uh, depends how old like ours with our telly in the fridge like that that would be about the same with ours we changed the well, telly about an hour about an hour or so yeah and now yeah. i've changed the telly and then turned the fridge right down it's 100 percent better yeah yeah the telly's made a lot of difference as it, yeah, we um, Jeff Jeff had a telly. Um, we had a look at his telly, and it was pulling three point five amps. Um, and um, yeah, I know. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> and I looked yeah. at the back of ours because ours doesn't make hardly any difference. And same make, just slightly newer telly, yeah. same size. Ours is only pointing nine not point eight an amp. So Jeff's got a not point eight amp one well, now. Twenty five quid, spot on. It's bargain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So it, it, that makes a massive. That's a big yeah, difference. Right. Isn't it? That's a big difference. I think uh, there's there's a, a, a train of thought when you're talking about batteries and size of your battery banks that you you need to do a, a really good power audit of what things on your boat are actually drawing, yeah. uh, and like like even even your telly that that it would now be drawing three four times as much as what you're drawing now mm -hmm. and all little things you, you your phone chargers your laptops whatever they all draw and they all add up yeah. uh, and and your fridge i think our our fridge the old fridge which were going were drawing 25 amps Bloody hell. and it were on all the time so yeah. if your batteries are a bit tired a bit old and tired the amount that. of power that a, a fridge is pulling out of them batteries it's no wonder so you know look at either replacing your fridge or 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 looking at your batteries and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean a lot of places the the place i i got mine from south yorkshire batteries you they'll if you take your batteries in they'll actually test them properly yeah. for you yeah and, and I, sort yeah. of like well, right that's only at 70 percent efficiency or yeah. or whatever and and it's it's worth getting your batteries checked I think. Yeah, I think so. I think so. And, uh, and the thing is, if one goes down, uh, the trouble is, if one goes down, I think you're better off actually taking the one that, if one goes down, taking it out or, r rather than replacing yeah. it with a new one, you're better off just getting rid of the one running on the four rather than, because otherwise the new one will get dragged down by the four old ones and you'll end up, you're best off. We That's what we did when, when our when our bank went down to foot, when one of our batteries cooked on a, on a rubbish charger, I took took that one out and we were running on four absolutely perfectly fine for a while and then we were down to three um before i changed them all but even at three though it was coping you know what i mean it was coping we had nothing um but uh, again when you said doing an audit i saw that um jack put in that narrow boat that james built and showed how to do a power audit um uh, the narrow boat that james built sorry the the vlog um that uh, shows you how to do a power audit apparently um jack says so it might be if anyone wants to know how to you do go that, around listing everything don't you how much they're drawing everything you can yeah yeah. Just add it up. Add it up. yeah i did one for when i were when i were building our fitting ours i i did one uh it's eight eight nine years ago now i can't i can't remember details but i did a a, a power audit and that's how i decided our bigger uh, battery bank that i needed to sort of like you know give us a bit of range so we weren't having to charge every day yeah. uh, obviously we've added things in uh since then but took old things out yeah. uh, so I, I think it's a good idea because if if you've got a lot of tech stuff so you're out on cut and you're using an inverter which kills your batteries anyway uh yeah you you need you need you need that backup in a bigger battery bank to sort of like give you a bit of leeway yeah. uh, in case you don't if you haven't got solar and you you don't want to cruise you know it, it gives you that bit of leeway rather than just going oh, i only need two leisure batteries because i've done this audit and 
that's going to see me through. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah you're sort of like, yeah, you're the limit. Yeah. I've seen, yeah. I've seen that Philip and Sarah said they're going to be cr constantly cruising in a couple of years, so they're going to leave it to the last minute to fit a new system as the tech's moving on all the time, which is very true, obviously. Um, yeah, new stuff's coming out all the tour, and obviously other stuff is coming down is coming down um, in price as well. So as sort of gel batteries and AMG batteries get get cheaper, they're, they're bound to get cheaper as you know over, as the as that sort of technology technology comes on. You had any uh, any dealings with these lithium batteries, Glenn? No, yeah. no. I've, no. I've seen a, I've seen a couple of people that have had them, uh, and they, they they seem to be great. But I don't think they don't cold weather very well. They're big, aren't they? Are they big and heavy? No, they're not. They're not that big. Uh, but you you have to have special chargers for them. They charge in a different way. Uh, but you can discharge them a lot further. Down to 30%, I think, I think, something like that, isn't it? Down yeah. to 30% or something? Down to 30%. Uh, but the charging systems are, are really expensive for them. Yeah, of course. They don't uh, get, the battery's expensive. The charging si system's yeah. expensive. I know. You have to sort of weigh it up on that, really, don't you? I mean, I don't know. I mean, our batteries have been on. We've just put a new set in it. And I might, if I get two or three years out of that, I think they cost me. I think it was about 450 quid for all five, which mm. I didn't think was a bad deal. And they're sealed. They're not, because uh, the last lot I took out were, were top up ones. And um, I find that a pain and, you know, a bit of a. Fat. Sealed, but you can take the little, you know, the little green and red little thing you can look for. You can take that out on top of them up. Can you? Yeah. All oh, right. I, I've had them out. Oh, the little lights, the little yeah. lights. They're just like a little glass. Oh, yeah, a little glass. Yeah, I don't take much yeah, note. You can take them out and top them up. Yeah, so you just pop that on it. The whole bank up. The scrap. I took it into work. We took it out, topped it up, and recharged it, and it come back spot on. Did it? So mm. they do. They do still dry out, even though they're meant to be sealed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's yeah. all. That's not because I, I thought the plates were meant to be better, aren't they? I don't know about. That. All I know is it's it's a sealed battery, but we got in it. No problem. Just topped it up, recharge it. No problem. It's still on the boat now. Is it? Oh, so I, wouldn't, I wouldn't write batteries off until you've had a proper check through them, no. Like your man said, you know, check your batteries or if, have a good check because you can condemn your batteries and there might not be nothing wrong with them. Yeah. I was just saying that Brian said um, life life pay batteries should not be charged when below zero. We're no good in this country then, would it? <laughs> <laughs> Bloody blade. <laughs> Be, yeah. be, be below zero up for through the winter when you most need them. So, but yeah, yeah. you let your heating on today. I let yeah, she had it on. A, we, that's on the that's on here. That's on my list. Heating <laughs> for an hour. She no, so I think she's 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 been living it large today. I think she's had it on three times. That's because you've not been there. Yeah, <laughs> she's been pressing the button like she's been going out of fashion today. So, uh, all right, we'll go on to that then. Seeing as we since we've exhausted batteries. So, heating. I've been, I've been. Uh, our heating system. What I don't get with the Webasto heating is Jeff presses his button and he gets two hours. If I press our button, we get. And I've, I've looked through it. I've tried changing it a million times. Don't seem to work. But I'm going to try again. We get forty-five minutes from minute from from a button push, and if it's set. To, on the timer, which seems to work when it wants to, um, you only get half an hour. Maybe your um, remote controls playing up. I don't know. It's not oh, it, it's, it's complicated, and we can't see it. We take pictures and then looking on our phone, zooming in, seeing what the screen says. Yeah, I know. He's, he's the. I mean, uh, the nightmare is as is. I don't know where yours is, Dave, but as as is right down. The, it's down the cold end of the boat. There's no heating in the engine room, so the back end of the boat is freezing. Um, mm -hmm. So we, and every all the controls are down there. But um, I have read, and this is what I'm going to try when it arrives. Um, that um, on the back of the controller, there's a, a link wire between pins two and four, and that controls the timer. So if you cut it and you press the button, it will stay on permanently until you switch it off. 
and what and it was a Robasto engineer that told somebody this. I saw it on a on a thread. It was on Facebook. It was on a thread. The bloke was saying. So what I've bought is I've bought a remote control switch, um, which can reconnect and, and unconnect it to turn it off and on. So I'm going to see if it works. It's another little demo. At least I'll video it, obviously. But I'm <laughs> going to try it. I'm going to try it. It comes with a little remote control, and it's a little switch. It runs off 12 volts, and then you put it down the back, and you put the. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run those wires into the into the two into the uh, the circuit. So when you press the button, it rejoins them, and when you press it again, it disconnect or you turn it off, it disconnects it, or either or whichever way around you need it to work. So I'm going to try it to see if it. I don't care about having the heating on. It's just that it's a fact. <laughs> I must admit. I must admit, it's it's a bit. It took three goes to get it going this morning. Three press buttons this morning, and as soon as I put, I think I put the generator on, and then it fired up, seemed to fire up straight away. But we were only down to twelve point four volts. It should have been fine. Yeah, I was all right up to about ten volts, and then she went cutting. Yeah, it just seems start to stop. Start out and stop. I know service. I don't know. Do you service yours, Dave? Uh, we haven't. We haven't got diesel. We haven't oh, got all well, the. No, we've we've got uh, an old an old uh, gas central heating boiler. Oh yeah, you said about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but we, the only time we use it, it we've got two radiators rigged up to it. But I've got it also rigged up to the water tank, so, so I can water. so I can eat. The only time we use it when, is when we're out cruising to eat the hot water up for a shower. We never oh. use the, it for actually eating. Uh, we use the log burner. But I'm looking at doing my van up and I'm looking at putting a, a diesel eater. And a spatter or something. Yeah, in yeah. you know one of these little five kilowatt things. With a blow, hot in, air. Uh, so I'm I'm quite interested in in how they work. Are they similar things to what you've got on your boat, or are they are they much bigger units? I think they're slightly bigger. But you've got all the water pipe and everything underneath. It's, it's, it's a, what you're on about. It's a trucky, a night eater, and a lorry. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. we had in our van. Yeah, we had in our van, and they tend to be more... twelve volt ones are really dear compared to twenty four volt ones. Are they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but they also we had one in our van, and that was thermostatically controlled. That was an espatcher. So when you switch it on, you put the temperature, and that thing just cut in and out when it when it needed to. And when the and ours was connected to our fuel tank, and if our fuel tank went below quarter of a tank, it um it cut out to protect the to, to protect the fuel. Yeah, make sure we didn't use all the fuel. So um, I noticed there was a little bit on lithium batteries there from. Uh, from Trev basically saying that you they must be they must be charged above five centigrade, so he looked at them, so he didn't think they were no good for him because he was out, yeah, because he lives in the UK. That's why it's too bloody cold. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, what's this? Uh, my Michael on. I can't even say that. That what's the name of that boat? I've heard of that boat. Michael on Perseverance. Yeah, Perseverance. And Jono both have lithium batteries and are probably the guys to ask. Right. Yeah. So there's a couple of people that are out on the, basically out on um, on the cut that I think they're YouTube and um, they, um, they've they got lithium batteries. So they must get on with them. I mean, some, they must work. So. Whether they've got them in a, in a box with a bit of insulation oh, around yeah. to keep they're them warm. Inside. Yeah, that's what I heard. That's why I thought they were heavy because I heard of somebody having some sort of battery, unless they were gel batteries under their bed because they were so big. I well, fancy that. Yeah, they were quite heavy. <laughs> you know, they were quite. They looked like I don't know, and they looked quite heavy from what I could see. Um, but um, so heating. Going back to that. Um, going back to the heating. Um, hold on. What's that saying? Uh, oh no, I don't have the Webasto Thermo Top C. No, I they all saying, they all said, do you have the Webasto Thermo? No, it's not that technical. So I'll have a look. I'm going to have a look at that. Huh? On, off. That's all you need, Dale. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, I, I, I've also ordered, because, I, again, to trial it, and because they're, they're cheapest chips, and I saw one in a boat, which I fixed the Webasto 
last year in the little seven day timer. It's like a little round digital seven day timer, mm -hmm. and it's seven pound. It's a seven, and and you basically you take the display, the Webasto display out, and you wire it, you wire it in in somehow it's about four wires going to the bottom of it and then it gives you a seven day t digital timer and the lady that i fixed the pump on hers last year she uh, was an older lady and she had hers on all the time mm -hmm. uh, she literally had it on all day you do yours glenn and you can come and do mine yeah all right <laughs> you can get it on mine yeah first because yeah, we don't use it as much as you do mate oh we do it's there to be used if you don't use it you've got less chance of buggering it up yeah, I know. I know. I, I think ours might be too Even in the summer, you need to switch them on a couple of times. Yeah, I think I so we never do in the summer. We never use it in the summer because yeah. obviously, if we're cruising, we're getting hot water from the engine. Is yours connected to the engine, Dave? Uh, ours isn't. No, you have because... you can't get it from the tank. The from the, uh, the, the, the oh, tank you put it in the front, the didn't you? And uh, <laughs> I didn't fancy running too great. Oh, so it's full length at boat, and you got to heat them up first before they eat the yeah. tank. <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, it's something I will look. I was going to look at doing it when I ripped boat art to have it spray formed, uh, and I was going to plumb it in then, and I thought for it's a long for way. Or, or what it was going to cause. Yeah. Uh, to root the pipes. Yeah. Uh, I just, I, I, I couldn't see the benefit really. Yeah, um, no, it's a long, it's a, that's a long way. But say, by the time they've heated those pipes up and then heated the, 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 uh, I can never say the word, calorifier. Calorifier. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that, <laughs> that thing. As sits right next to our engine, it's literally in front of our engine. So <laughs> it couldn't get any closer. And yeah, it doesn't take long. We can run our engine for about half an hour and that water will be hot. So we sometimes that's use what it. I wanted to do. Uh, but there you go. Next time. <laughs> next, when you build the next one, Dave. When I build my next part, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can do it. So I, I just saw there's a couple of questions because we'll, 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 I'm, I'm conscious that we've, we've been on for nearly 45 minutes gassing on. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, uh, Alan says... Uh, oh, Eldon, there's a question from Philip and Sarah. Is it cheaper to use heating or the multi stall fuel? I would definitely say the multi fuel stall. We use that all the time um, to pretty much heat our boat um, because, one, it's easier to get that than it is to get diesel generally. So um, I would go with the um, the logs and coal every time. I don't know about you two. Yeah, it, and it helps with condensation as well. Yeah, it's much drier heat, and it's a very dry heat. So, yeah, definitely coal. And then Alan says, what does the group think about back boilers on stove? Funny enough, I was just talking to Mrs. Mrs. W about this yesterday. I said, because our fire was so hot, I said, what a waste of heat. We could have had a back boiler running, a, you know, a couple of rads or hot water on the back. But as our stove hasn't got the adapt, you know, the clips to put it on. But I um, I know you have to have a, our last boat had it, but it was disconnected and it had a little 12 volt pump, right? Which I presume from, from the maker bike, if I remember what I saw from it at the back boiler, uh, the back boiler on the back of the stove, um, and then below to the side of it, it might have been nothing to do with that. There was definitely a little pump that had been disconnected, and I didn't know whether that pump the water around otherwise how would the hot water get around to all this pump somewhere wouldn't they uh, and you know you also have to have a, a header tank inside but for yeah. expansion of water and that it, the, uh, from what i've read once you get them balanced they're very they're very good but getting the actual system balanced because you've got to have your pipes going at an angle Oh, so your radiators and, and that to allow the the water to flow, oh, really? uh, getting them balanced is a is a bit of a job. But once oh. it's work, once you've got it working, they're very good. Uh, but I didn't like the idea of having an, an expansion tank in inside boat and and no. that. So, uh, 
It's personal choice, isn't it? it I haven't seen many. I haven't seen many with back boilers. I know, I've heard a few, but mm. not many of them. But I, you know, I get it because obviously you've got all that heat in the back on the back of the fire, and it's sort of not wasted, but it's it's could be you know, used. Yeah, yeah, you could use it, but um, yeah. I, so I think it's personal choice. If it's a bit of a fat by looks of it. Um, what was, uh, I took my gas central eating out. Oh yeah, Tra uh, Trev took his central eating out of his boat because um, it was using. He had a gas central eating system and it was using two cylinders of gas a week to run it. Yeah, they are they are great on gas. Oh, yeah, that, a lot of those ex hire boats have that, don't they? That that um, gas central heating. Um, and I, I I looked at a boat for somebody a little while ago, and she had three, not the small 15 kilos, not the big 48, the one between. She had three of them in there, and hers was all gas, but it was it looked very complicated. It looked very complicated, and it was quite an old system, so she, she'd literally pretty much gone to it. She'd had a Webasto fitted instead. I would imagine you would get through gas, like, and the, the people that hired probably don't care. No, um, you know, because they just use whatever's there and then take it back empty, don't they? So, um, uh, oh, yeah, I do that. Someone just said, um, use a computer fan blowing down the ceiling. Well, funny you should say that. I've I've heard that before. They use a you know, the fan that goes in the back of a computer, yeah. Um, I've heard a lot of people do that with tubes and they suck air back down the boat in, in plastic tubes. Um, someone we knew had a bank of three above their fire rather than electric fans and they're 12 volts and they take hardly any draw and they had it blowing the hot hot air, hot air down their boat what I did with those little fans in our mushrooms, one in the kitchen and one in the bathroom so when you turn the light on they act as an extractor out of the mushroom <laughs> So, little tiny fan, but it does actually work, believe it or not. It does actually work. A little tiny extractor, if you get a bit of smoke in the kitchen or the um, condensation in the bathroom, when you switch the light on, it just turns a little fan on inside the uh, mushroom, which sucks the stuff away. And it's Do you have to take them out for uh, boat safety, though? Didn't, didn't, they can't see them. The, the, the see thing it. is, though, that it's empty enough, though. The actual the actual fan, you can if you look up into it, the, 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 the blades are not that close that so you can see straight through so with it not on you still get plenty of through air it only pulls it out if you switch it on uh, but anyway that was mine <laughs> anyway i think if anyone's got anything else am i allowed right. to finish now mrs warner <laughs> <laughs> I, i'm just gonna ask you jeff uh, yeah. i know um we talked we sort of like skimmed over it last time about the Plastic sheeting for secondary yeah. double glazing. Yeah, go and uh, try it. I do, I do believe you've tried it on your boat. Yeah. Oh, I did. Me, it's me. I've put it on. Um, I put it on two windows at the front. No, I put it on three windows at the front and two down the back. The two down the back, which was on a painted frame, peeled off. And um, I don't think the double-sided tape was strong enough because obviously they try and make it so you don't ruin your windows. Or I was a bit, I was a bit slap happy with the hair dryer and made it too taut. It was like a drum. Um, so I might have over overstretched it with then put pressure on the tape, which pulled it off. Basically, it lasted for a couple of hours. But the one, these two in the front, definitely makes a difference. Definitely makes a difference. And well, a lot of money either, was it? Yeah, I haven't done the rest of them yet, but we don't. The seal, so the seal went on this one a little bit. The one by the bedroom, it used to be the worst one, seems to be holding up the best, and that's got no condensation, and that would be soaking wet every day. So there's no condensation in that one at all, and there's no condensation in the one at the front, a little tiny bit down the bottom. But I think that the um, <clears throat> the tape might have come away at some slightly some point. But the first that was the first one I did, and it was a bit of a, I think. You know, I'm like the instructions sort of went out the window. I knew what I had to do, but I think probably I should have read the instructions because it did say follow the heat round the tape when you seal it up. Don't try and make it too tight straight away because you, the the fan the, the hair dryer does take all the creases out of it. You, it's like looking out of a glass window. It doesn't look as long as you trim it up nice. It doesn't look crap. 
I thought it might look a bit crap and a bit messy, but it doesn't. So as long as you do it right. Um, so I'll probably I'll have another go at the other windows when I get a bit, another chance. So, so I thought Trev, yeah, Trev said his his boat was a um, ex hire boat, uh, an ex hire boat, yeah. And the, the, I thought it was they put that in there. And what was that? Uh, can you discuss hot water heaters versus engine heaters? Um, I think we might save that till next time. We'll save that till next time. Um, yeah. I'll put it on the list. Let me write it down. Don't lose the list. Yeah, well, no, it's just little art versus engine. So, yeah, so yeah, we'll talk about that, we'll talk about that next time. But I think we'll we'll wrap that up now. And yeah, thank you yeah, everybody for commenting. It's been great. I don't think I've mixed anything up down there. No, no, no. So <laughs> thanks everyone for um for watching, and I will speak to you. We'll see you soon. Yeah, anyway. Thanks everybody for. Coming asking in. questions and joining in. Yeah, it's been good. Yeah, yeah there's been good. There's been a few people on there and a few people we know and a few people we don't know. So great. Cheers anyway. Right. So I'm going to finish that now and see you later. Hold on. Bye. See you.